Thank you so much, and thanks everybody for coming out. Um, it's exciting to be part of this exhibition, but um, also kind of amazing to get this opportunity to get to know Jamil um, more thoroughly. So, yeah. So, three questions. <laughs> Do you want to start, or should I? Um, go for it. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Thinking about your work, when did you realize that you wanted to be an artist? Like, if there's a, you know, think about the past, this idea of, I was really thinking, looking at work and thinking about our past, our trajectory. Hmm. You know, like there's this growing up, this desire to express ourselves. And thinking on that, you know, that note, is there a, you know, maybe a moment or like, I wanted to pursue this career. You know, that's sort of what I've, with this question, when, it, when did you realize you want to be an artist? I think that I was intuitively making things from a really young age. Like I was um, that kid sort of saving change for uh, like craft kits as a child and sort of voraciously uh, working through them. So a lot of these like mask making or like uh, crochet pot holders and stuff. And I think just a, a creative output was really intuitive to me. Um, Career-wise, I would say maybe like six or seven years ago, I um, had been, I had finished my undergrad at SFAI and um, kind of made a conscious decision that I wanted to pursue art making as um, as work, like as a career, um, which is non-linear and complicated, but uh, there was definitely like this kind of intentional uh, moving towards work for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think making things has always been really intuitive. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> so my first question for you is about uh, collaboration. Um, I guess I'm curious about how collaboration fits into uh, not necessarily just the work that's in this show here, but if it's sort of like a thread for you um, around the work you've been making, how you think about collaboration. Um, yeah. I always I often say this, that I don't work alone. Hmm. For the longest time with doing my photography, I always work with people. It was always this conversation of portraiture work. Hmm. And um, so in a sense, my work has always been with a, sense, with a strong connection to collaborations. Hmm. And what this work is doing now is give me a, an excuse, even a license to pursue more Mm -hmm. collaborations to like to meet other people and talk more extensive about their life stories and then think about that how to pers pers to create something about it um, yeah within portraiture work there's a collaboration of you work with someone right um, now because I'm inserting myself into the work so the collaboration is extended on that as well right it's like because just not photographing someone is me part of that representation. Great, thank you. Um, in relation to your sculpture, you know, or think about this idea of memory. Hmm. You know, if, if you know, even thinking about childhood, or how how memory, what is the role of memory in your work? Hmm. A, I know it's a big question, putting her totally <laughs> on the spot here. Uh, but you know, memory, how is that played through the work that you do? I mean, I guess I. I think a lot about uh, tactility and the act of like touch um, as this uh, as this intuitive um, practice. You know, I think that this maybe threads into this question about um, desire to pursue art making. Mm -hmm. For me, that um, I think art making. Art making is maybe not necessarily about memory for me as much as it's sort of like um, maybe glancing backwards and looking forwards and sort of like um, trying to generate new objects in the world. But I mean, ceramics as a material has always been really interesting to me because it is this permanent material that is also 
pliable enough to sort of record the maker's body into it. So it sort of has this inherent memory to it um, that when I choose to leave my fingerprints on the surface of the objects that I'm making, um, I'm also choosing to leave the, uh, the memory of my body into the surface of the work. And I think that um, as queer folks, but you know, I think like when we're when we're thinking about marginalization and sort of community around marginalization, there's this kind of profound uh, profound thing when we're um, representing our bodies and our communities, and then sort of like putting them out in the world to then sort of exist into the future, sort of like creating this archive of our selves or something. Um, yeah, I think I think I think about that a lot. That's a really important part of my material interest, um, as well as kind of conceptually. Yeah. So I was also, I guess, I was thinking about color with your work, and um, you know, particularly the the photographs that you have um, in this show sort of where your decision making comes in around the colors that you're using and sort of how you think about the color if it's um, if it's just a backdrop for you or you know I guess when I look at them I uh, I think about sort of color as material or color as subject and um, I was just curious yeah if you would talk about your use of color color for me is really a celebration Color for me is really a celebration. It's really thinking about representation of queerness in the past. Think about history and how I learned through black and white photographs hmm. or black and white films and trying to think about representations now. They're positive, they're empowering, and through color. So there's, uh, there's a very symbolic aspect of what color is. When you think about the gay flag, is this is this label almost, right? This flag that is used to represent us, queerness, um, homosexuality, gayness, trans, right? There's, there's just so much that is within this idea of the flag. So the work is really thinking of my this project is about extrapolating on that. Hmm. on the colors, yes. So the colors are there. It's about diversity. Let's just go, really go beyond that. And this is the hues, right? The, the, the project is called Hues. And this idea of fluidity, of diversity and fluidity of color. So that's, that's where color is played out in the work. Hmm. And as far as what, what colors go to each piece, it's really a collaboration in relation to uh, who I'm photographing. Some people hate the color yellow for whatever reason. Some people now, most importantly, hate the color orange, right? Uh, and I love the color orange. Um, so everybody has a different sort of understanding or, or liking a taste in relation to color. So it becomes, each picture becomes a, um, it's an individual choice as well. But mm. underlying all this for me is this idea of using color as something, as a, as a, as a way to ex represent a celebration, empowering. I want to know, it's not more about, about, it's not very much a question, it's more sort of understanding how your practice develops. This idea of, of creating a, a piece and then going, in, going through the work to make that piece, to manifest that piece. Uh, within that, what inspires you to be, to, to produce a piece, right? Mm -hmm. Your pieces are very distinct in a sense. When you mm -hmm. start thinking about your work, you know, there you have something, something very representational here. Uh, it's a little different than this, right? So, mm -hmm. as, so how, what, what inspires you? I think research is uh, a really substantial component to my practice and it's sort of happening parallel to the making, um, the actual object construction. Um, I guess I'm just thinking about how um, 
none of the the works in this show and none of the work that I make really kind of generally are ever um, happening uh, solo or like in an isolated sense. Um, you know, maybe just materially the way that uh, ceramic works often is that um, you sort of work a, work a piece until um, you need to sort of let it dry enough to be worked on again. So I often have four, five, six pieces going at once so I can sort of like work on something over here and then when it's, you know, not going to take any more clay, I can like go over here and work on something else. And so all of the, all of the work is happening in this sort of um, larger kind of collective environment. There's like a lot of things happening at the same time. Um, and I think that like the way that I develop the work, I think is cumulative that um, it's about all the sort of reading and writing and drawing and painting and, you know, object making um, and how they sort of like feed into each other that that they're never sort of isolated practices. Um, and it's really just kind of a fluid thing. But, you know, sort of subject-wise, I think a major part of that is uh, like a reading and writing practice and being engaged with um, text, text and sort of research. My last question for you is, um, What's happening in your studio right now? Like, right Ooh. now, what are you working on? It's a mess. <laughs> Great. Um, I am photographing uh, more people. I'm doing more collaborations. Mm. And at the end of every shoot, it's a mess, right? The studio is, becomes this very messy space that I have to go back and organize and think about what I've done and what I will do again. Um, I just finished back to back is almost uh, three photo shoots and they were pretty complex in relation to what I had to bring to the table and what they had to bring to the table as far as um, the costumes and uh, or props um, so right now it's very messy which is good mess is good and the idea is to again to go back reflect a little bit I, t I work in breaks I take a lot of breaks in between, I need, I need those breaks. Um, so the work has more um, uh, refresh energy, I would say. Um, so right now it's very messy. Within the break, I'll come back, clean it up, and then we start again. So thank you. Oh, thanks.